guys, welcome back to another episode of Unplugged EV Leftovers. So this will be a new sort of video I'm showing here on my channel where I will use videos or content I have not used in any other video yet. So most likely I filmed this within an episode, but um, yeah, it was just, so I didn't use this video yet. And um, that's what I call leftovers. Video material I haven't used before because it just didn't fit in any kind of episode. It was making the other videos too long or was just off topic. But they still contain useful information, so I don't want to waste them. So this could be shorter or longer video clips, which are not linked to each other. And they also have random content, but everything will still be related to the Outlander PHEV, of course. I just hate wasting leftovers. So please enjoy. So guys, I've uh, got the car plugged in for almost two days now. And I just wanted to verify again that after the charge has finished um, that there's nothing going on in terms of energy usage or balancing or something. The EVSE is still on 10.13 kilowatt hours and 501 minutes, uh, hours and minutes. And there's no reconnection of the car or something within two days. So it is really not it is really not worth keeping the car plugged in all the time. You're wasting energy for the EVSE running on standby 5 to 10 watts. It's, it's not doing anything good for the car. There's no benefit to keep the car plugged in. If you wanna, if you wanna leave it fully charged, just charge it up and then disconnect the car. There's no benefit from leaving it plugged in. So some people still saying it's good to keep the car plugged in all the time if you are not using it to maintain the battery health. They even claim the state of health goes up again if you keep the car plugged in and all sort of things. Um, I think this is all a myth. As far as I have tested it and I've done this several times, there's, there's nothing happening. There's no energy going into the car, even if it would do a balancing after one, two or three days or something. The BMU is not active during this time once the charge has finished and it's not doing anything with the battery. The only downside is the battery sits on a relative high state of charge at about 90% state of charge for a long time. So it it rather harms your battery actually to leave the car plugged in for an um, extended period of time. If you do it overnight or something, not a problem, but I usually don't leave the car plugged in over the weekend if I don't use the car. I leave it on the state of charge regardless what it is. When I come home on Friday, for example, it is on 40-50% or something and I leave it until uh, Monday morning until I recharge the car again at 1 a.m. in the morning. So it's ready for me uh, Monday morning then to go to work, but I don't leave the car plugged in all the time. I, I don't think this is good for the battery. Look at this, 56.5 degrees, the sun off. It gets really hot. When I charge on, on um, 15 amp, on, on full power, 3.5 kilowatts, the sun off gets really hot. And I had this twice now that the, uh, not now, I had this twice in the past that the actual fuse inside uh, blew and I don't know why this is. It is getting really hot. Uh, it's 55 degrees. 
Hmm. This Zonov measures the power of the load as well. So it has a little shunt resistor where the current flows through. And that's why it gets so hot. Which is not good. I don't like to... Yeah. The, the Zonov can do 15 amp, 16 amp maximum current. But I don't trust it. It's a very cheap Chinese device, so I'm not sure. And you can also... It smells a little bit like like plastic, you know? Heated up plastic. I probably should put a bypass switch in there. So when I charge on 15 amp, which is most likely when I'm here anyway and I'm in a hurry, I just bypass the sun off, don't measure the energy. But I don't have this um, fire hazard here. Yeah, I really don't like the situation with that. It's totally fine on 6 amp and 10 amps. But the 15 amp is probably the maximum you can get through. And in summertime I had 70 degrees measured on the on the Sonoff device itself. 70 degrees. And now it's a little bit colder outside, so it's not as hot anymore. But still, it smells plastic, you know? A little bit. It's not good. It's not good. Evening, guys. Uh, today we have been to Redwood Park. Um, this is just a little um, national park area just below the Toowoomba Range. It's about 45 kilometers away from where we live here. So f first I wanted to do some trip planning for that because it's a, f yeah, it's a 90 kilometer travel and it's mostly highway driving. So I wanted to use the charge mode or the um, safe mode in the car to preserve battery for later use. But then I said, now the battery is fully charged now and I have never checked how far I can actually go on the highway. So I let the car drive on EV only on the highway and um, was going to see how far it actually... So let's have a quick look at the trip card here. Um, these are the two trip cards. Yeah, that's the one here. Okay, so yeah, distance was 45 kilometers. As you can see, and average speed was 77.3 kilometers per hour. Uh, quite some elevation. Sportive driving style. Has anyone else ever seen something different than sportive? Is it just me? Is it just my car? I don't know. That seems to be fairly... Oh yeah, I was trying to let the car coast as much as possible on the highway. 11%. Um, and here 40 kilometers that was the distance when the ice actually kicked in 40 kilometers on highway driving with a little bit of help I, I was trying to drive as efficient I was trying to drive as efficient as possible so I let the car coast downhill sections and uphill sections I only drove about 90 95 kilometers per hour I didn't use the cruise control on any elevation, just on the pure flat stretches um, to get the most out of it. And on, on this trip we have some elevation on there though, so there are some uphill and downhill sections on the highway. Um, I guess 40 kilometers on highway driving is still pretty good considering the small battery and the, the power the car actually needs to go uphill on a highway with 100-110 kilometers per hour. So, brand new battery, calibrated BMU, 40 kilometers on a highway at 100, at 77.3 kilometers per hour, of course. Yeah, so before we reached the, um, the destination, the engine kicked in. Yeah, you can see the um, consumption, 19.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So, fairly high consumption, highway driving. Of course, and if we have a look at the other trip card here, this is on my way back. Yeah, you can see the elevation advantage I had then because we were going downhill for the first um, couple of kilometers. Sportive driving style again, of course. And you can see there was no actual um, generation of any energy into the battery 11.7 to 12.1 so I actually arrived here with a higher state of charge than I left over there 
uh, 21 millivolt difference between the uh, lowest and the highest cell during driving on a highway. That's totally fine. Um, we have seen we have seen higher values here from of about 50 millivolt. This is still totally fine under load, and still 6.1 liter per hundred kilometers only on a highway. Pure hybrid mode, empty battery. Let the car do whatever it wants to do. So pretty good. And this is the combined trip card we had for the whole trip. So 90 kilometers traveled. And I just go quickly to the consumption. And only 3.6 liters per 100 kilometers used on pure highway driving. 80 kilometers per hour average. So that was um, both trips combined. Um, yeah, pretty impressive result. 3.6 liters only. Okay, guys. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for your support. This is Andy from Unplugged TV. Unplugged TV, yeah. <laughs> I wonder when the first time is I'm saying EV Unplugged. Okay guys, I'm signing off. Um, you stay charged and we will all see us in the next video coming very soon. Okay, thanks guys, see you then, bye.